uh, open session and at this time I'd ask that everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, while we're standing, I have unfortunately a long list of names to mention, uh, residents who have passed, and some people, uh, one person known on the national level. Um, local residents uh, that have passed away, Wilfred Pierce, Robert F. Rose, Paul Ferreira, Thomas Clifford Sr., Lois Munsell, Robert Ridley. I should also like to mention the passing of Senator John McCain, a uh, gentleman who, who, who spent a, too long in a North Vietnam uh, prison camp, uh, who came home and uh, could no longer serve in the Navy, but turned to public service. Uh, Senator McCain was uh, an outstanding individual, a national hero. He never stopped serving his country and uh, was really a remarkable individual. I would also like to mention that yesterday was the 17th anniversary of 9-11. And at this time, I would ask for a moment of silence in memory of all those whose names I mentioned and also all of those who were killed in the attacks on 9-11 and those who have since passed on because of uh, the actions that took place that day and ensuing illness uh, in fighting fires and uh, public, the uh, uh, public safety people that uh, survived the initial incidents but have since passed. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. At this time, I'd ask for our public, uh, if anybody has any public input this evening. Mr. Higgins, you're just in time for public <laughs> input. Just say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, and we will do public input as we always do towards the end of the meeting one more time. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to yield the floor to Madam Administrator for the Town Administrator's Report. Thank you. Good evening. Um, so there was an article in the Taunton Gazette about the energy aggregation, which is, of course, our uh, purchasing of electricity as a town, uh, not the municipal operations town, but literally the town of Dighton. And um, by doing so, we went out to bid to the market and got a lower price. Um, there was some litigation about that cost, and the consortium of 23 towns did settle with public power. So the original price per kilowatt was 0 0.1012 cents, um, and it's going up to 0 0.1043. The, this added cost is still the lowest price based upon that whole bid. So you still have the lowest bidder, even though that it is going up. Uh, this board did vote to uh, accept the settlement. You will be receiving, if you're part of this program, you will be receiving a mailing um, detailing everything. The Taunton Gazette article is pretty good. If you'd like a copy, I can send it to you. Um, but it just is an increase in their costs. They weren't able to actually take care of what they were promising, essentially, uh, without the risk of going bankrupt. So they underbid, uh, they bid a little bit too low, but um, we did reach this settlement. It's an agreed upon figure that is still the lowest bid, lower than the second lowest bidder, mm -hmm. and um, public power thinks mm -hmm. that they can do what they need to do to, to get through and keep providing our power. So, so, we're, so folks are still saving, but they're just saving less than right. the original but promise price. Exactly, and okay. it would still be, if they came in at this amount, they would still be, public power would still have been the chosen provider. Um, so, <laughs> but it, it, your, your bills will go up slightly, and again, you'll get a mailing detailing all of this, but the Taunton Gazette, they did do um, a good job talking about what was going on there. And you're not alone, it's 23 towns, 23 communities. <coughs> 
Okay, so I am actually excited about this. I was able to put together the evaluation, the proposed evaluation policy and procedures with the proposed plan, Nancy and I. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Slack and Goulart, um, got together talking about what we wanted in our, bless you, talking about what we wanted in our evaluation. We looked at evaluations and processes from Rehoboth, Somerset, Westport, UMass. And UMass, thank you. And um, this is a presentation of a kind of a mix of all of those. Selectman Guler and I agreed that a score of five potential categories versus three was a little bit more fair, a little bit more uh, what we were looking to do. And this breaks down a policy to um, for you to rank and evaluate your department heads and non-elected officials and uh, non-union personnel. If this were to be introduced to the unions, just so everyone's aware, that would be at the bargaining table. And now uh, we're not throwing this at anybody. This is of course. Um, a promise that the selectmen made to the finance committee over the last budget season that they would establish this process. Promises made, promises kept. That's right. Uh, I guess my first question, so I have one procedural question and one content question. I guess I'll start with the content question. Uh, first, I just wanted to say I think that it's really good. Um, it's really thorough. It's a lot more organized and uh, more concise than perhaps the ones we used as a model for this. Is there a, I didn't see in here a self-evaluation component, is there? Yes, there is a self-evaluation. Okay. So when I was putting this together, and that's something that Slack and Goulart said was very important, and mm -hmm. she'd never seen an evaluation process that didn't have a self-evaluation component. So if you go through the process, um, part of this policy, and I know it's long-winded, so I don't really blame anybody for not being an expert on it, but um, you, the employee would conduct a self-evaluation and then hand it to whoever the evaluator would be. And then together, both the evaluations, the evaluators and the evaluatees, for lack of a mm -hmm. better word, those compile together to be the evaluation. And if there was a written response made by the person being evaluated, that is also put together as the evaluation document. And all of that together would go to the personnel file. So, so that it's, that's okay. Is the self-evaluation using this form as well? Yes, okay. I thought about no, I having a separate one and I said, well, how would you compare the metrics? Because you're voting on, or you're evaluating on two different things. So I thought we could iron out wrinkles, well, I but I think it I think would be wise idea. to keep the same metric. And it, it says mid-year review. This is also the same sheet for a like performance review for the full year as well. It's well, that's up to you. I didn't form. create a, a mid-year review form. Um, if and you'd like me to, I can. And it's optional, the mid-year. We don't have to do the mid-year. Is that Correct. In this, in this policy, I yeah. made it optional. However, that does not mean you save up all the, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, to the, I mean, it really, and it's, that's detailed too, because it's not fair for someone being evaluated to go along life thinking everything's fine, and then all of a sudden, you know, Yeah, I had mentioned mean? that before, that um, this form is, with the exception of some of the town stuff in here, this very much follows what we had to do at UMass, and we did have two a year. And so for the, for the year-end one, after you get through that, you already are preparing for the ensuing year because you have to state what you intend to accomplish, right. what your goals are. So then, um, when mid-year comes, that's one of the things you talk about. And if, in the meantime, your goals have been that you, what you want to accomplish have been approved up front, and something comes along and it's like, uh, you aren't going to have time to do this one because I need you to take this one. Then, then in effect, one gets put on hold and you move the next one in for the last six months. You know, as a circumstance arises mm -hmm. that you have to deal mm -hmm. with. So, by doing mid-year, you also have a, if you have to change course in the middle of the year because something happened. And I can think Y2K planning was the big bugaboo that we got hit with in 1999 uh, because the um, Board of Trustees said that the Internal Audit Department had to be totally responsible for assuring the university would be Y2K compliant everywhere. So needless to say, most of the goals that we had set initially, they were out the window because we had to devote so much time to Y2K. But um, 
But as we said, it's like a progress report too. By the same token, if the person being evaluated says, you know what, that was what my goal was. But you know, as I work through this, this is really something I think should be put on hold because I would like to bring in this one now because I think I should do this one before I go to that one. And sometimes you have to work through these things to find out those things. Mm -hmm. right. But um, this, uh, what um, I'm hoping is that the board will be able to look at this and go through it and see if there's any places that you want more information or any changes you want made. And then we'll bring it back at a future meeting and discuss whatever changes and then, you know, um, approve it as the document. I already At went least for the next, yeah. for the next I year. already went through it, did I you? I also went through did it myself. It? I didn't really have any changes. I just had a question about the self-evaluation. And then I guess I had a logistical question. Do we need to vote to approve the form and approve the policy? Well, first of all, with the policy, we're reading them three times. So. You know, right. we should probably try to start that. As We're going to stick with our policy of reading the policy. <laughs> <Correct. laughs> um, but I guess my question is do we have to separately vote to approve the form and then the policy, or by virtue of starting to read the policy for the first time tonight, so that would approve the form? The form is technically part of the policy okay, that's what I thought. Um, because we reference the form in the policy. Sure. So it's all one document. Okay. Do we want to do the first reading tonight? And if anybody has, through the next three weeks, has a, an issue, we can address it at like the next meeting. And remember, we have two meetings a month now, so this mm -hmm. is really going to bring us into almost October third. You'll be doing, if all goes well, uh -huh. um, your final, final reading, yeah. and then it will be adopted. Oh my God! This is the first September meeting. Yep. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> it's all a blur. <laughs> Okay, so who would like to just a sure. little bit more so clarification like than on the uh, the six month uh, review? It's it's my position that it's only if the evaluator or the evaluatee has concerns that they have to do the six months. So that's I, how I, it's written. Right. Here. So I don't want I don't see it as every six months we're doing an evaluation on. Well, and that my I wrote it that way because my concern is life happens. And I know how busy mm -hmm. we all are on a regular basis. And if it's like, oh, I gotta do that six month review, I just can, I can feel it that I'll be like, ugh, I gotta yeah. do the six month yeah. review. But we gotta so, remember though, that there it's, should not be only, it's not only your position. We've got oh, all no, the I other know. people. The department heads in the that's non union. That's it, so if you're doing yep. six month reviews for all of them, that's, that's what I mean. Right, like, that's. That will be very time consuming. But I think it should be optional. If an employee says, I really want the interim one right. because I need some guidance. Right. And I think, you made it optional, I think it's right. important. It's optional, but yep. I think it's important that employees feel empowered to mm -hmm. request it mm -hmm. um, and not look at evaluations as a bad thing or like, ugh, I have to do that. They're good. They get everything out in the open and you know where you stand. Um, so, you know, no one likes to tell somebody that they're doing a bad job, but I think stating expectations okay. is very important. And that's how you grow as an employee, once you know what the expectations are and you meet them. And so. each, each one will have an opportunity. If something changes, that they can say, hey, I want the six months because I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta make some changes on what right. we originally discussed and where I'm going. And you know, right. I, I think those are, it's a good opportunity. Yeah. The only, oh, go ahead. I guess I just have one, again, procedural question. So let's say, j kind of given the scenario that Selectman Goulart proposed where someone said, oh, I need to change things, my goals have changed. Once the evaluee states that they want the mid-year review, is the department head or whoever then obligated to do it? I now it's not I would optional. Say so, yes. Okay, yes. right. I, All right. I would think yes. so. so once one party mm -hmm. requests it. Okay, exactly. I understand. As far as uh, voting on this uh, tonight, I know you've read it, I've read it, I'm satisfied with mm -hmm. it. But I'm not sure uh, Select Mama Gula has read it. So oh, no, she I'm, made it. So she, no, yeah, but you're, we, worked, we worked on this. Yep. Okay. You know, because you had some concerns with the last evaluation. I want to make yep. sure we're all on the same page that we all agree that this is a good uh, evaluation form. So mm -hmm. yeah, this, I'm satisfied with it. This, uh, when well, she still has, you know, to the, the end readings. of October to, right, yeah, we, if she finds readings, something right. or. Okay. This is, it, I've actually, what, what, again, what we put together with the, um, bits and pieces is very close to what we had. To, ours was mandatory. You didn't have a choice. Six months in a year. So I've actually worked under a system with this kind of a form. 
Um, and the reason I mentioned that is that, um, as I said, we had one big bugaboo hit the fan, and that was Y2K. And uh, so anyhow, uh, I think, but you know, I'm comfortable with what we've done here. The other thing too is, so we put this in place, we do it for a year, and if we find out it needs some fine tuning or something but added, we change. just do it the next yeah. time. Yeah. Absolutely. Do we want to, so we would sit, reserve the vote until the third, the third reading. reading. Okay. Yes. Um, so does, do we want to start the reading? I'll read this. Who would like read. to do it? I'll, write, I'll okay. read it. I know. I feel, I'll give you guys a break. <laughs> Um, and I also do have a change because now um, under the purpose and applicability mm -hmm. section of the policy, that last line, evaluation shall take place in the month of January each year with a mid-year review in June if requested. That Perfect. would be my yeah. only yeah. Uh, addition. Okay, here we go. Performance evaluation policy and procedure. Background. The town of Dighton seeks to professionalize its municipal operations and as such is introducing a performance evaluation policy and procedure. The employee is expected to provide input for discussion, and the evaluator is expected to respond to the employee's input as well as to provide feedback on the employee's performance. Purpose and applicability. I should also mention that the date of effective date for this would be January 1st, 2019. So we'll have this in place and then we'll be able to get ready for January. Performance evaluations are intended to provide a formal opportunity for two-way communication between the employee and the Board of Selectmen or its designee, here and after referred to as evaluator, to enhance the professionalism and performance of employees. Per performance evaluations provide evalu information for the continuous improvement of performance and also aid in uniting all departments to work toward common goals and plans. This policy shall apply to all employees under the appointment and supervision of the Board of Selectmen. Union personnel and elected officials shall not be subject to this policy. Evaluation shall take place in the month of January each year with a mid-year review in June if requested. Process number one. The evaluator will secure a copy of the employee's job description. The eva oh, evaluatee, which actually is not a word and should say employee will submit a self-evaluation to the evaluator using the performance evaluation form that is attached to this policy. The employee should make note of any topics that he or she would like to address in the discussion with the evaluator. The employee should also list any accomplishments or achievements of goals that have or have not been completed. Two, after reviewing the employee's self-assessment, the evaluator will provide a written evaluation and comments on the performance evaluation form. The performance evaluation form will indicate the employee's progress in achieving the designated goals. Each goal will be addressed individually by the evaluator and specific comments, commendations, concerns, and or recommendations for improvement shall also be included. The self-assessment shall be attached to the evaluator's evaluation. Together, these will constitute the complete evaluation. Three, the evaluator and the employee will have a meeting to discuss the review any topics of concern or special importance to either party, and to communicate about performance during the review period. Included in this meeting, the two parties will agree on a set of four goals to be accomplished during the next review period. After the meeting, the employee will have the opportunity to respond in writing to any comments or ratings in the performance evaluation, if desired. Any written response shall be affixed to the evaluation. The employee and evaluator both will sign the performance evaluation form. The original shall be kept in the employee's personnel file and the employee and supervisor shall each be given a copy. Mid-year review. One, there shall be a mid-year review in July of the review period. I suppose that should be edited may, as well. Right. Yeah. There shall be a, uh, there, there may, may be, be an optional, may be, may be an be. optional. There may be an well, may option. Be a, may just may be. kind of implies. Right, a mid-year review. May not. There may be a mid-year review in July of the review period. The evaluator shall endeavor at all times to notify an employee, either orally or in writing, whenever the evaluator feels that a member's performance is not meeting professional standards or expectations. The purpose of this provision is to provide employees with as much advance notice as possible of concerns that the board or the town administrator may have regarding the employee's job performance and to provide the opportunity to resolve such current concerns. That's there so that a supervisor isn't like harassing somebody. Um, item two, between June 1st and July 1, the evaluator and the employee may, at the option of the evaluator, oh, or, or employee. Yep. Yeah. Well, back to the, to the paragraph one. On the front, we said, if requested. So there may be, do we want to say if requested? I was thinking that. 
there may be a mid year review one, in July of sentence. the review period if requested. Yeah, we'll keep it consistent. Do we want to say that? I, I was thinking if requested or at the option of either the evaluator or employee. Oh, so take some out of two and, in other words, yeah. kind of combine the Yeah, thoughts. to make that say what it should say. So at the option. All right, there may be a mid year review in July of the review period at the option of either the evaluator or the employee. Sorry, public, I can't write fast. The employees. Why we do this? That's right. So now what does this mean for two? Between June 1st and July 1, the evaluator and the employee may at the option of either party, I'm going to so we don't meet for a mid-year review if the evaluator has concerns about the attainment of goal, if, so that should also say if either party. For a mid-year review, if either party has concerns about the attainment of the goals to date by the employee or any other concerns about the employee's performance, the employee may also request a mid-year review of here. So you know what I'm going to do? Rewrite this whole thing. Okay. I get the intention, yeah. um, so we'll rewrite that. And you'll provide us with next time the yes, reading will have exactly. a new copy. Three, during the mid-year review, the evaluator and the employee shall identify specific areas of concern, state the reasons for his or her concern, and outline recommendations to address those concerns which shall be set forth in writing. In the event that a member disagrees with any of the concerns or recommendations of the, that's a employee. In the event that an employee disagrees with any of the concerns or recommendations of the evaluator, the employee shall have the right to respond in writing. Also during the mid-year review, the employee shall be afforded the opportunity to update or tweak any goals agreed to should circumstances change surrounding that particular goal. Item four, nothing in this section shall preclude the evaluator from identifying areas of improvement or concern in the annual review. So that's there so that just in case there was an improvement or something else arose, we could also say it. Goals. Number one, there shall be four goals listed in the performance evaluation form. Two goals shall be proposed by the employee. From. Form. From, yeah. Form. Form. Two goals shall be proposed by the employee and two goals shall be proposed by the evaluator. Goals shall be SMART. Specific, which means clear and unambiguous, and unambiguous. Measurable, meaning res results must be measurable in some way. Attainable, must be realistic and attainable by the average employee. Relevant, must relate to the department's overall mission. Time bound, must have a definite starting and end point. Additionally, goals should not be dependent upon too many outside factors that cannot reasonably be controlled by the employee. And then your signatures. Um, one comment, under relevant, must relate to the department's overall mission. Right. Should we also say, and something about the town? Um, yeah, sure, and town. So the, the department's mission, but also, if you will, the overall, overall town, town mission. Or right, aligning um, with the town. We don't have a mission statement, do we? No, yeah. No. Just the department's kind of. I mean, of we have the master that. plan. Right, right. Which is like a. You know. But not just, you know what right. I mean? The, I, yeah. You, you know what I mean. Okay. I don't have any problem adding end town if that's what we're doing. Well, somehow that they're included in it. Um, if anyone's interested, we have copies of the, the source documents we looked at. If anyone wants to look at them and see if they see anything else that might ring a bell or whatever. And a good part of this is from the state uh, evaluation that you were talking about. Like that spot, I remember when you were doing evaluations mm -hmm. that uh, we had the same. Kind of basic. Right. So that's good. Did you I have like to it. do two a year? In your no, department? once a year. It was once a year. We do two at my, yeah. my company right now, mid-year and okay. year-end. You were county, right? I was state. Oh, you were state. State. Okay. Okay. <coughs> this is pretty standard. They do it in private. I work in private industry. They do this as well. Good work. Thank you. Did, you, did Thank anybody you. have Thank anything you. they wanted to add about the um, policy or the form? Forms. Okay. I like it. Thank you, Matt. Can I take the floor back? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm done. So yeah. as I said, I've got I've got copies of the source documents. If anybody wants yep. to just say, hey, I, w I want to see a How this couple of these out. towns. Uh, we've got them. Good work. Very Thank good you. work, Thank colleagues. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was going to go on to old business, but we have some experts in the crowd tonight. Um, so I would ask my colleagues, one of you, to make a motion. If we could move to the uh, 8A under new business since 
Um, we have our animal control officer here. Yeah. Did we decide whether or not we have to make a motion? I know we had some discussion. Oh, yeah, okay. We, well, I thought we, we had decided that it wasn't we, we, necessary. You can agree. We've agreed. I, on I agree what? That you can change it. So we can go to new business uh, A. 8A? Yep. All right. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Um, and 8A for our public discussion of a scope of services for grant funds earmarked for the Dighton Animal Shelter to improve services and facilities and just a very brief background. Um, Senator Mark Pacheco uh, put in $25,000. Uh, it was a earmark uh, for funding for the Dighton Animal Shelter um, and it actually passed. So. Uh, we do have these funds and we have our animal control officer here uh, so we can discuss how at least begin the discussion on how we would like to see those funds used and you can come up don't be shy <laughs> thank you for being here so we have the twenty five thousand dollars we need to decide exactly how we're going to use it it can't be used for administrative purposes it has to be used for a building or uh, a facility or um, sheltering or um, how I carry out my job. It can't be used for administrative purposes. So I know we've talked about maybe having moving into a new facility, not a new facility, an old facility, but a new facility for me. I think we need to discuss what we're going to do so I can get what I need to go, the scope out to these people so we can get what we need done. Is a new van considered administrative? I think so. Because if it's not, that would be a great. I think so. My Current understanding is, is it has is it? to be for the like for the, a for facility. The facility. Is there a time limit? Let's see, here's on the it's, a, it's just for this year. It has to be done. But it sounded like she wanted to um, get everything in. So she can, she says, I'm currently working on contracts and invoices and schedules. So can you please send a scope of services detailed proposal explaining what the funds would be used for in budget narrative? For this award along with the contact name and email address so though she sounded like she wanted to get this going because right. they want to that is what it's because well, they want to give us if we have to use it by the end of the fiscal year right. they need to give us as much time as possible right. to take care of it one of the things and and obviously he's on vacation right now but Jim had some good ideas about converting a section of the existing police station and he would be a good resource to give you the kind of description you need for that grant right i just want to i guess the thing is is that what we're looking to do or am i is that not on the table and i need to figure out to redo you know to update up where i am now i guess that's my biggest question is Can, go ahead oh no i'm sorry i just wanted to ask so i know where the current facility is that was supposed to be was that permanent? Like, was that? No, it was I never it was supposed always to be temporary. It was right? never supposed to be permanent. It's not supposed to be a shelter per se, as much as I have to hold dogs or animals for seven days, and then during those seven days, if I haven't heard from somebody in two or three days, I start working at that time to try to find foster homes so they're not staying in the shelter or find a rescue that will take them. Um, I'm very good. The pit bulls that I get, I have a pit bull rescue that's very good about coming down and getting my pits and. Um, put them in foster. I have a dog right now in foster that will be getting spayed in a couple weeks. Those kinds of things. I try not to keep it up there very long if I don't have to because there is no heat, no air conditioning. So from the town's perspective, what would be, I know I'm looking at you, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what would be potential issues if that were to happen, if we were to Correct. So to specifically the the, the old, old, old police station. Right. So it would have to be converted. Mm -hmm. Number one, the there's a roof problem with the where the two um, trailers meet on the seams. I mean, I guess I think Jim wasn't talking about those. He was talking about the original structure. Yeah, right? the trailers wouldn't be there. Yeah. The last I knew. That As in, they'd be removed. Moved, right. Yes. Exactly. So that's my thought. So we would remove the trailers, and we would need to gut this thing a little bit just to. A little, freshen I mean, it up. to freshen it up. But the rooms, I mean, I know somewhat what the rooms are there. There are some rooms that I need mm -hmm. uh, a quarantine room, which I don't have. If I bring in an animal that is appears sick or really bring in an animal that I don't know, I'm supposed to quarantine. It's not supposed to be out in general public. Right. At this point, I don't have that. 
It's got to have its own air, its own everything, own sink. I can't take cats right now. I'd like to have a cat room. I think that honestly, and I understand the current situation, but I never, I mean, I understood why they weren't allowed there, but it is an animal shelter. Right. Well, there was more than just the facility. Mm -hmm. There was more to that than that. But I understand. I, I would like to have a cat room. Absolutely. I would love to have a room that I can bathe dogs and do that kind of stuff. And if we have those kinds of rooms, right. I can have people come in and do shots mm -hmm. and to do that kind of stuff if I had, you know, I also, my favorite part of your plan was um, the kids coming in to and read reading. because that is oh God, symbiotic. Right. That's uh -huh. good for the animals and that's good for the kids. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I just am a little partial to that plan. Right. So, the, Do you feel that the size, the, the overall size of the original, it was the garage, right. is adequate for what you need? Yes. At, at this point, yes. And Unless, would it just be the animal? Like, is, yes. is, you said I was going to be next. I'm sorry. I'm, you just <laughs> I <did. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so we'll go back to that. Yeah. Is there uh, <laughs> any other group in town that's interested in using the old police station for anything? Yes. Other than yes, there is. There is someone from Parks and Recreation who has been advocating for office space for quite a while. My position was, sim because they were saying they needed a computer, I think the town should somewhere in this building have a computer for public use that's hooked up to the printer so when someone comes, so I think that could be like an amicable I think way around we can do them that. being once, there. Yeah. Once conservation moves out of their room and goes over to Old Town Hall full time when the meeting room's done, we can expand the the wall out for cable and add some um, climate control there because they're equipped that room runs hot and then build out like a little office nook and that would be the shared that's my thinking yeah. that would be the shared space because then he'd have access or they would have mm -hmm. access to printers town hall issues a phone line um so other things that kind of opens up but i am more into this plan with the trailers being removed mm -hmm. um my only question is how far does twenty five thousand dollars yes. go and does you know are we going to be putting in like town. matching money yeah. or you know how does that go we, we probably should um plan on a warrant article for the special for special because so. jim if we got the 25 jim can come up with the rest of the, the total cost and we can deduct the 25 and then we will have money to work with yeah. uh, i also have a i don't know how much is in it last i knew there was a couple thousand dollars fund that's been set aside mm -hmm. that either people have given me or stuff marked for the animal shelter not to use for anything besides the animal shelter jen would know how much is, is that exactly. like friends money it wasn't friends money it wasn't the friends it okay. wasn't friends money it was donations and that kind of stuff so I, I want to say there's like three four thousand dollars in there but I know that's not okay. much but there's some Every bit helps. right there's some in Every there bit helps. if we were to one second mr. Ferry I see you back there <laughs> um, <laughs> if we were to uh, invest in this conversion whatever word you want to use for the old police station into the animal control office or shelter whatever word you'd like to use is there a plan to kind of expand services and recoup any funds that might be expended to make that happen? There would be, we could do a lot more with adoptions mm -hmm. because right now I don't charge for adoptions. Mm -hmm. I just ask for a donation. Um, our new leash lawyer is gonna start bringing in some money. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm afraid or not afraid. Um, so, and there'll be, I'll be able to shelter more dogs and stuff like, and that kind of stuff. Right now, if somebody calls me and says, I wanna, get rid of my dog because it bit somebody or it just doesn't fit in my house, I have to refer them out somewhere because most of those dogs you can't keep in the kennel for very long or you end up with a really bad dog. So I refer them out. If we have a, an area that we can let them run around in and that kind of stuff, it's much easier and much pleasant. So that is my, because I'm trying, all right, what's the other side of this? What are people who are not in favor going to say? So I think of noise, barking. Is it a good neighbor to the tennis courts? Is there like it's a courtyard that you could build to keep the dogs yes. inside? Yes. So that, you know, that kind yes. of thing. It's an honest personal opinion. I feel like it's in a very residential area right now and have I've never heard any complaints. We did um, in the beginning. You did from, did from the, the folks next we door? We did okay. in the beginning. But you know if they it's if you somewhere. have the right well if you have the right facility, you have music right. going, you have that kind of stuff going, 
it, it lessens the anxiety of everything that's in the shelter. And perhaps point. like if we're going to be building, right. we can soundproof right. certain aspects. So I think just something to think about. But I, I think know when I talked to Jim about it, uh, because it is on a floodplain, mm -hmm. um, Jim said there is a way because of the height of the ceilings to raise the floor. And I'm not sure I'm using the right terms, but he knew there was a way to do that so that the there would be some elevation. Lifts it, out. it wouldn't be sitting right yes. where it is now. And okay. I thought, not to put you on Mr. the spot, Ferry. <laughs> but I thought you told me that it was already lifted a little bit. Yes, when you go in the, the second one, the floor has been elevated every really once. Mm -hmm. yes. What Mr. Abbey has talking about is identifying the, the level that needs to be to satisfy the floor plan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So were you talking about going before this t special town meeting for additional funds? Well, we would have to. Uh, if we have to do this, but we, we don't know. To. The end yeah, but we don't know how much money we need, right? So I, I, but if I'm we a little troubled by that. Yeah. But well, we're well, going to go before the town, and then right. suppose be. it's not enough. We're going to go back. Excuse me. We're yeah. going to go uh, back to the townspeople again, and then ask for additional funds. So I would hope that we'd have a fixed number, a r realistic number. Twenty-five thousand dollars is not going to do it. I agree. I agree. I think the police station is a good spot to put mm -hmm. the, uh, the animal shelter. I guess, and I agree with you 100%. I'm sure Selectman Goulart would too. Um, my concern would be losing out on the money. And we know we need mm -hmm. to do something with the animal shelter anyway. So at least we're getting $25,000 towards a solution mm -hmm. rather than just the town raising appropriate free cash, whatever it is. And I, I think there are options. So what I, what I was suggesting was just to put a note in the folder now. To remind us to get a number right. from Jim, when he, Mr. Aguiar, when he gets back, Please. and say to him, we need to know what the total project would be to make this into the animal shelter. We have a $25,000 grant. We have some money in a, mm -hmm. another account. Mm -hmm. but, and then when we go to town meeting with a number, we can mm -hmm. also explain to people, this is actually contingent on us doing what we have to do to get this grant money. If we don't get this grant Correct. money, it's not going to happen. Correct. But we can't, we can't have some money from the town or else we can't do the project and we're going to lose the grant money. Right. My other concern about that would be I would hope that the building commissioner, because we all know Old Town Hall ended up being more expensive mm -hmm. than was initially thought, we would be giving higher estimates, and I know that's tough when you're trying to sell a project to the public. I get it. Um, but I would hope that we wouldn't undersell it and we would just oversell it. And then if we don't end up using all the money, it can go back into the general fund. So I would I hope do, that we do that. I do have cages and stuff that were given to me from Bristol Aggie. So those will be able to be worked into there. There was a grooming table given to me and some cages. So those will be able to be used. Almost. Mr. Ferry oh. and then Ms. Quinn and then Madam <laughs> Minister. Oh, sorry. Mr. Ferry. I don't think so because it's from this. But then, from the agricultural something something. Does it have no a matched component to it? I don't believe it does. Mm -hmm. Not according to the email anyway. No. Yeah. Um, FY19, Agricultural Resource Administration funding earmarked for the Dighton Animal Shelter has been made available for the funding in the amount of $25,000. Funds are to be approved, are to improve services and facilities at the Dighton Animal Shelter in the town of Dighton and shall not be used for administrative purposes. Right. I, I was thinking in line, like, my chapter 90 money. We have that's what I was that. thinking. But yeah. that's because you are, you are borrowing, or not borrowing, but you're expending money in anticipation of reimbursement. This, this, this is not reimbursable, yeah, right? Uh, right? right. Uh, this is going into a, a pot for yes. us. Miss right. Quinn. So I, <laughs> I guess my question would be uh, for you, seeing that you must have lots of connections in other towns with other various shelters. This is a very specific build out. It's not really something that, you know, we can or a building inspector even could probably price out exact. Do you know of any contacts um, in other shelters that have done renovations? Not done res renovations at a year ago? I want to say just built a whole new shelter. So they might be able to have like a specific scope of work or something that you could maybe go off on that could maybe improve the 
I mean, there are people even in the in uh, the state that can help me with that. Just to get that number. Right. Well, it's it's exactly the, the things that I need. Like, what do I need for the quarantine room? The specific right. things that you need for the quarantine. Room. I basically know, but they know, you know. And there might be stuff on bid lists that I don't know about well, and that I'm, kind of stuff. Yeah. Read them. <laughs> so the, all those kinds of things I don't know. I don't do that very often. I know in the old town hall, the thing that caused the price to escalate, the, the one thing, there were some other smaller ones, but in the main hall, the plan was to patch the cracking walls, uh, sheetrock them, and when they started to attempt mm -hmm. repairs, the walls kept crumbling and it was like sheetrock the whole mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So that was an added expense that mm -hmm. wasn't part of the original First plan. So. That is a good, and my, I wasn't making an indictment on anybody, no, no, but no. It, you know, we, things happen, un, un, for, you try to predict the future, we are not Miss Cleo, so things happen and things change, right. so we should just be honest with people, put a higher number than what we think after Stacy does her research, Jim obviously will do his due, due diligence, our building commissioner as well, um, just so we don't have to come back. Do you, you know what I mean? I and completely so understand what you're saying. I'm just wondering if we can do this in two weeks, though, because that's when we're going to have the, the warrants ready. So well, we we're talking well, about... Well, you don't have to have the exact figure. I mean, we but, have to have it But it has there, to be run by the finance committee. Where the, you right. know, they're going to have to take a look at it, so they're going to want a figure. Mm -hmm. And we did the same situation with the police station. We went back to the town a couple of times asking for additional funds. So I, I'm with you 100%. I just... We need to go to the town and ask for the amount of money that we're going to need and not... Mm -hmm. uh, extra money that could end up getting spent any you know <laughs> as things happen going so to the yes <laughs> so i'm just great to be at the you know yes. uh, senator pacheco no relation to me uh <laughs> twenty five thousand dollars it's great that he you know had that passed and uh and i believe 100 percent that we should be moving it to the police station i just want to be a, give the townspeople a realistic figure because i'm not going to go back before the townspeople Agreed. and ask for additional funds I so yeah, I to have a, a plan a plan, but a, a, a realistic. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure that uh, our building commission can give us the final answer as to how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. So I, we do have to look at other. Can we at least, for the sake of moving forward, again, not everything is hashed out tonight, of course, because we need to let things develop, but can we at least have a vote, and no matter which way it falls, on at least are we going to have this move to the old police station? Like, is that the plan? So we at least know whether we're and renovating the current right, structure the, the at, on Tremont sudden, Street yeah. or... I'll make a motion that we move the animal uh, shelter to the uh, old police station. May when I? It's, when it's vacated. And does that mean <laughs> removal of the trailers? Excuse me? Does that mean removal of the trailers? Well, I'm not, is that... Put that as an amendment. Yeah, but is that... The building commission decided that the trailers are going to... I don't know if he's decided what they were going to do. I don't see myself using the trailers, so and if somebody else can okay. remove them, because we talked about removing them and putting in like French, almost French doors so I can back up and be able to sure. let animals in kind of sure. thing. So them not being there would be a help to me. <laughs> and the removal of the uh, trailers, the two trailers there. All one motion? All one motion. All right. So we have a motion. Do we have a, a second? second. We have a motion and a second uh, discussion. I am Madam just Minister. going to reach out to um, a foundation called the Santa Foundation and see what might be available to us to help us. Right. So we'll see. They love dogs, and so do we. <laughs> and is this all dependent right now? This doesn't need to be part of the motion, but if this is economically feasible for the town, that's kind of underlying all of this. Is that correct? You're basically authorizing us to explore Perfect. Moving the like animal that. shelter or moving the operations to the old police station in the best interest of the town. Working in the best interest of the town. Okay. And even if it ends up on the, the town meeting warrant, if something happens before that meeting, there can be no motion mm. right. if we find out whatever. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What's the cutoff point for? Uh, you haven't voted We're to talk, change it, but I'm going to request the 19. I'm requesting the night that you amend your motion oh, for the 19th. Yes, yeah. and it just doesn't leave us enough time, um, so we're requesting the 19th, and okay. uh, that would work so better for us. We're mailing out the warrant and all that? Okay, so you need some time. We need time. some time. I understand. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstentions, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ferry. We appreciate it. <laughs> Some resolution to that, so that's good. <laughs> I'll Absolutely. call the Stanton Foundation. We tomorrow. may end up and calling it the Ferry Building right? since both of the ferries occupied it at one time. Oh, that's I, fun. I do want to thank you for bringing this to my attention, and I know I know how things are. Like you probably didn't want to ask, but um, I really do appreciate you being on top of this very much. So thank you. Thank you. All right. I guess we're going to say one sure. other question. The the runs that were built. We can move those. Oh, because that they did. He did a beautiful job. Constructing those runs. We can move those inside runs. Okay, so at this time we'll go back to old business. Uh, um, is Mr. Ferry? He is here for something. Do He's we want here Mr. For... Ferry? Would you like to get home? <laughs> Have dinner at a normal hour? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. So is it? So, yeah. Just did. Chairman, I move that we take agenda item 8C out of order. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Award contract for appraisal services, complete streets program. Mr. Ferry. That's actually not what he's here for, but you can comment. <laughs> this is a twist ending. <laughs> twist beginning. Do you want to talk about complete street? You have street? the floor, sir. Well, you have the you have some information on that motion. Yes. Um, so complete streets. Mm -hmm. The town is great and has its prioritization plan. We got our surveying for thir our top three projects, and um, we are looking for the board to award a appraisal services contract to Mr. Claude Giraud, mm -hmm. um, who is our resident appraiser. He will be doing 22 easements. The figure came in at $12,150. Can you just repeat that number? One yes, $12,150 for 22 easements along Somerset Avenue. Is that right? And Pearl Street. And Pearl Street. Pearl School, the corner. Correct. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we award the contract for appraisal services the Complete Streets Program, the sidewalk building uh, project, to Mr. Claude Giroux in the amount of $12,150 to include Somerset Avenue, Pearl, and a small portion of School Street. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Mr. This. Chairman, I move that we take agenda item 8I out of order. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Before you begin, Mr. Ferry, I just wanted to ask, was the date of September 30th, 2016, the actual accurate date on this document? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That's a sample. Yes. Gotcha. That's not a full request. That's okay. just what they would okay. be doing. Sorry. You don't know what that is. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> because you looked a little confused. Ms. Uh, Superintendent Ferry, you have the floor, sir. Yes. Uh, Ma Mallory wasn't sure I was going to be here. That's why she did a little bit of work on gotcha. it. Gotcha. And she's been... Um, contemplating my request for some additional help. As you know, we had a late start this year because of the type of storms we had last winter. Actually, I still have three pending uh, repairs from last winter um, still to work on. So I'm um, brings up, and we try, we do have a very ambitious fall trying to do some drainage work and some road repairs prior to some pavement projects that's still not submitted yet. Uh, so in lieu of that and anticipating we are already in a transition of a wonderful season coming I'm a little concerned about being readily uh, prepared for this winter so I'm just requesting some part-time help as needed to do a, a assigned work laboring I guess my first question is madam administrator is there would we need a special town meeting article to fund this? We already have the 
already the have the funds, funds. Available? it is as needed less than 20 hours a week non-benefited mm -hmm. um, they would have all the qualifications that our full-time laborers would have but this would be a an as-needed position and there is funding available it's not yeah, it's, I don't it, want to say that it's not creating a position, but it's not truly creating we, a We've position. had part-timers in the past. I've had a part-time line in my budget, plus we've lost uh, the clerical help, so we haven't been tapping that line oh, yet. Okay. So right. we are healthy on that part. Mm -hmm. I actually don't particularly have any questions. I did read the Farmer's Almanac. We are supposed to have a rough winter, so I do my due diligence as I, well. I don't know if you have the updated version. No, of I may not. You'll have to let, loan me a copy. I believe in science, <laughs> not the farmer. That counts as the Mr. Ferry <laughs> version. <laughs> Does that, I, yeah, Look, I do have a question. Uh, as everybody knows, we've had some of your laborers working next door. When that finishes up, are you going to be able to utilize these uh, employees? How many how many employees are working next door and are they working full time the over there? Uh, I'm sorry. No, are they working full time 20 hours a week? What are, they, what are they working over there? For the most part, I have one employee next door. Um, I pull them out of there as needed. Mm -hmm. uh, my last two hirees were supposed to have carpentry skills yep. for town projects such as that. Mm -hmm. So um, it fits in there. I'm not complimenting the project for all its needs because I have other needs out in the, the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, so my concern is then that we're wrapping that up next, though. I, be mm -hmm. I believe sometime in October it may be finished, so whether or not we should be hiring part-time employees or just wait until we get Well, that's, that's why I suggested as needed, and we don't owe them. Oh, so, so if they come back and then they're not needed. Well, if I don't need them, they don't. Okay. This yes. is very akin to a reserve police officer. That's what I was just, I was thinking that. Yeah. So it's a reserve part-time as needed laborer, Our correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That is a good point, though. Thank you. And we do have funds, so we're not going to go back before the town asking for additional. That can be a stipulation, but yes, there are funds. But and you can. So um, the the individual who was doing the administ some administrative work, right. Mr. Ferry, right. so that has freed up some. Some, and some that money can be utilized for part time. Correct. Labor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the request of um, Superintendent Ferry um, to be allowed to uh, hire additional help as needed on call uh, for uh, specific requirements or needs. Does that work? Yes. We'll just add using available funds to that motion. Yes. Yes. I'll second that motion if that's added. Good work. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Just one question. Um, are you looking at uh, some kind of clerical support for him? Oh, I, well, this is how this came about. I asked him, how are you doing without any part-time help? And what I meant <laughs> was clerical. And then he said, well, I could use a laborer. <laughs> and here we are. We, uh, to, to answer your question, we're still exploring that. Um, okay. As you know, Mallory's taken on a, a few things out of my office. <laughs> and um, so there are actually some major projects, and which are more fitting for a town administrator, anyways. So we're still seeing what those needs really are, as far as clerical needs. And um, as long as she keeps saying yes, <laughs> I'll keep pushing stuff her <laughs> way. Okay. Will you reassess that before, like the annual town meeting, if you do decide that you I, do need some I think time? We, I we've been it doing be that like two or three. Budget. We've been doing that like two or three times a month. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one request, uh, if you could tell the gentlemen or gentlemen who have been working in Old Town Hall that they're doing a great job. Let, let them Excellent know. job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. You want to stick around for anything else? Um. I do have some for public sure. input, I guess, because uh, I was forced to go to a meeting today. <laughs> if I could. Solid way so to I, do I, that now, Mr. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it would be public input. Um, there was a couple good takeaways. Most of it's going to be for the emergency management part um, and Board of Health. Um, one was from um, Brooke, Brooke Nash, who was one of the speakers from DEP, and the other one was John Fisher from DEP. And they, you'll hear more about that in the 
our next emergency planning meeting and preparedness. Um, and some good information came back about recycling and contaminated recycling. I already stopped with Board of Health this evening and shared that with them. But um, what I want to take up your time about tonight was one of the other takeaways was in our town we have uh, some people with ELA, um, excessive litter addiction. Mm -hmm. And I, they do a good job in the fall, uh, in the springtime, right around um, Earth Day. Mm -hmm. and, um, we expanded on it quite a bit this morning, and um, it was a very good takeaway. Most of the towns that are getting on and involved with the Keep Massachusetts Beautiful, they're adopting that logo, putting it right in their own town website. And they're, once when this gets going, they're talking five to 800 people volunteering for the day. It's more than uh, around, I think we had around 30, not counting uh, the fire explorers and the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we need, they suggested that a committee is actually considered informed. You don't have to do that tonight. It's something to look into, but you really need some people with the ELA syndrome and uh, let them run with it. I like so. that. Thank you. So Does that you, include adopt a highway? Nope. No. You that, that committee can come up with that and adopt the roads, those type of ideas, and that can come out of that possible committee. But so you really need someone to run with this and be excited about it, and it, it's it, it's very addictive. So it would be the keep. Day in beautiful correct group uh -huh. and the, the testimonies about it and we do see it this this is one of the cleanest years our town's experience I'm sure you all noticed that and we have people that are active picking up litter on their own streets their own neighborhoods and it doesn't make a difference because when the street is clean people are less apt to litter further Absolutely. so that that's what it all comes down to and, it, and it, inadvertently it reduces waste going into a landfill because when you have the Earth Day cleanup, we're not really sorting it. It's no really easy way of having clean recyclables coming out of it. Mm -hmm. So even a small town like us, I think we did close to two ton last spring. So, mm -hmm. so the Make Dighton Clean Again Committee. So uh, there's a contact <laughs> here. I, I'll give you some brochures I picked up. And the guy that's uh, really pushing this is Anil Rain. Um, he has, also has a company that helps uh, promote this, you know, with t-shirts and stuff like that. He's very involved with that. Thank you, Mr. Um, you, whoops, you were with the, the Kathy Marissa's group? Is that yes. You, went? Um, I, you remember uh, Ed C., who is the director of Ma executive director, director of Mass Recycle. He was at our meeting today talking about that at MMA. So, um, mm -hmm. Uh, they get into a discussion of the, the cleaning up of solid waste, the uh, single-use grocery store bags, that's all the, of that. That's the biggest thing they'd like to focus on. There's a variety of things that contaminate the recyclables in the single stream. The main thing is, is keep the plastic bags out of the recycling. If we can focus on that, it, it just gets better from there. Uh, there's a new link to cut and paste and put on our own website. I gave the uh, Board of Health some instructions on how to do that this evening, and it, they're very excited, and that probably will be happening in the very near future, which um, MassDEP will keep it up. To, when they have an update, it would automatically update on our own website. So. Okay. So are we going to, uh, next year, are we going to, uh, related to this, are we going to make an effort to recycle stuff that we pick up on the sides of the street? I, it, well, we need to have it cleaner that's what we're promoting so if we can have a way of doing you know, that but I, I picked up 135 nip things they were all empty I can tell you you didn't the, clean them out no they were already emptied but the bottle of water were half full but the all the nips were empty yep. but I, we, and we I can, put them in my recycling bin mm -hmm. we, we can explore that because I think it's important that we yes recycle whatever mm -hmm. we uh, you'd have we to can. have everyone would be really so I do Easton's cleanup day and there's monetary incentive I usually get a dollar fifty every time um, but you have to be organized with your group and if one person concentrates on recyclables you can designate a bag but you just I everyone has you got to be like organized have, have Orange like, bags be recyclables, right. black bags right. be... And like with your people, you're just going to be like, okay, I'm going to focus on knit bottles and, mm -hmm. and recyclables. And you just have to do it that way. So, Because otherwise, it, it's there's no way. There's no way for you to go pick through. You'd be spending hours. You know, I, I separated the knit bottles as I was, because I just realized yeah. how many they were on Brook Street. Right. Uh, so yeah. so I, I kept them separated and then I counted them. Yeah. And I suggest next year we have a contest as who gets the most knit 
you can't bring your own, but uh, who? <laughs> Township ticket. Yeah, <laughs> so n now is actually a good time to start planning. Um, I know I know it's tough in January to coordinate it when they snow on the ground and whatnot. Uh, one of the biggest downfalls I saw last pickup we had, we had a good turnout. Mm -hmm. we, we had a group working on Maple Street, and a whole bunch of people were going to the complex, didn't know anything about it, and they contacted us afterwards, wanted to know why they weren't notified. So that, that's a big resource right there. That comp, all those people that use that complex mm -hmm. could have been involved yeah. in their own community. So it, the numbers for the volunteers would have jumped mm -hmm. tremendously if they was planning. And obviously, now's a good time before they plan their days also. Mm -hmm. We should get Vicki Piazza involved in this because she's really been involved yeah. with Earth Day. So yeah, now. she's got it started. Maybe yeah. we could put it on the agenda and then ask her if she'd like to come. I think that'd be great. Did you get any information about grant money for uh, recycling Probably projects? Okay, yeah. Because they talked about this at our meeting today. Not in detail, but I was thinking of you. I didn't know if you had gone or not. Uh, the, the first round is picked already. Later this month, if I ha have my, the equipment pot and the people that don't have the plans, you know, all the ducks in a row, those are going to be picked further. As far as the grants we were looking at with the Board of Health for the solid, pla um, the rigid plastics and whatnot, uh, our, our Board of Health is going to, I believe they're going to vote to table it right now and just monitor the market. Um, right, right now you got to pay quite a bit to get rid of it and there's no market for it and then it becomes part of your reporting so it makes sense to keep it the way it is. Right now our rigids don't go in a landfill, it's sorted at the other end in New Bedford anyways, so that's a good thing it's not in the landfill already. So. Why, why create another expense and a report, reportable issue? So right now we're monitoring that. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Superintendent. Thank you. Anything else? No. That's it, I think. Now I can. <laughs> you can right? have dinner now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just want to commend you if you had any part in getting the grass cut along 138. That's what I said to him today. <laughs> because now we can see the guardrails. I was, I believe it was yourself, or Brett, that asked me to try to get a little message to them return my calls. Um, but they got the message. Um, I suggest, I suggest that Mallory, somebody should write a thank you note, but to thank them for doing their job. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Do you get thank you notes when you do your job? <laughs> yes. That's something you want to start. <laughs> I, I do, and I appreciate <laughs> that a lot, actually. Did they do 44 also, or are they in the process? They only 138? No. Okay. So we'll reserve the thank you card so they get yeah, that one a little more. But that might be because they were doing the pothole repair. So they might be. They might do that first that and then. The, yeah. We'll, we'll monitor that. But the we'll reserve the, the thank you card. We'll get that back. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all over. We got to go back all right. to 7A. We're going to go to 7A. Request to adjust the due date for submission of articles for special town meeting. I believe the. What we originally proposed was September 26th. We're thinking seven days back, so the 19th? Correct. End of day? Noon. We okay. said noon. Yeah. All right. That's that fine. just allows us to literally sit here all day, craft the warrant, send it to town council, and get everything we need to do. On the 26th, mm -hmm. you'll vote to place warrant articles on the agenda, um, on the warrant, and they will be sent out to the public. Who am I concerned with that noon uh, time? Is that we and we had a conversation, Sylvia Way. The, the planning board is meeting September 19th at night, 6 6 30, to decide whether or not they're going to recommend that Sylvia Way become a public way. Can we make if one I know that it's exception? coming? So it's actually already on my oh, list. Oh, put a place It's, it's already on my list to include it. If I know it's coming, then you know it's there. It's it's for me, it's a deadline. Like, I'm not a jerk. Like, if I know that it's coming, I, I'll get it on there. It's a deadline for everyone to know. I need to tell the Board of Selectmen's mm -hmm. office and Mallory that this is what I'm looking for. And similar to what Stacy's doing right now, we don't have to have every particular right away. We mm -hmm. can work on it during that week. Mm -hmm. And then what really matters is the 26th. Also, they wouldn't be able to get an article to us before they have that hearing. So right. I think right. that that's like a very reasonable, if someone I just, just doesn't make sure. do it, and I actually, then we wouldn't I plan accept on it being here that night. Their meeting is the 19th in case anybody wants to go and I plan on hanging around and waiting for what they have to say. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we adjust the due date, that we revise the due date for the submission of special town meeting articles 
from September 26th to September 19th at noontime in the Selectman's office. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Just thank you. Oh, well, thank you. thank you. <laughs> Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. On to new business. We already did A, so 8B. Vote to designate Dighton Town Hall lower level as the official site for early voting in Dighton. Uh, Madam Administrator, should I at least just read the dates for the early voting at the very minimum? Uh, just for folks who are not aware, we, we have been uploading the entire packet with all the materials we have tonight. So if you'd like to read uh, this memorandum from our town clerk to the Secretary of the Commonwealth, you can. It is online under the Board of Selectmen agenda and meeting minutes. Uh, ours are as follows for the dates of early voting, October 22nd, 2018 through November 1st, 2018. Dighton Town Hall is not open on Fridays. October 22nd, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 23rd, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 24th, 2016. Can we get this changed before we submit this? Yes. October 24th, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. October 25th, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 29th, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 30th, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. October 31st, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And November 1st, 2018, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And the change that I asked was simply from 2016 to 2018. Scrivener's error. Correct. Yes. Okay. So we should vote on this. I yes. am accepting motions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the dates uh, for early voting as outlined in the memo from Board of Selectmen to the Secretary of State. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Good work, uh, fabulous town clerk, Sue Medeiros. <laughs> On to, we already did. Oh, 8B. Uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I move that we designate Dighton Town Hall lower level oh. as the official site for early voting in Dighton as for the hours that were previously read. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Thank you for the catch, Selectman so Goulart. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. We already did 8C, so we're moving on to designate Selectman Goulart to act on behalf of the town with regard to the Complete Streets program. I actually thought we did this in bulk with a bunch of other projects that she was working on when we did the discussion Storm, of your memorandum. Right. I just wanted to make sure That's fine. she we was can do an uh, official. working with Claude. Yeah. So. Do you want to do another vote? or I have no issue. She's been working on it since pretty much its inception. So Great. <laughs> Do we need to? Would you prefer? I, I'm trying to think if this was one. I don't think. I don't have a recollection of it. It was, was but projects. it was all preliminary stuff because Mr. Ferry came to me and asked mm -hmm. me to help him. Mm -hmm. But but with this, um, um, your next. We test. voted that if a selectman was going to take on a, a certain sure. project, whether assigned or or if they wanted to okay. do it, it had to come before the board for a vote. So I think we have to vote. I'll make yeah, a motion to designate select uh, Professor Gulak to act on behalf of the town with regards to Complete Streets program. I will step down and second that motion. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. And the motion passes. And we'll give you a thank you note for your work on this. <laughs> thank um, you. <laughs> so, so um, Mrs. Aaron Steen and I have met with Tom, and um, how we'd, we're divvying up the project, because there's so much to it. She's working with him on the reports that have to be filed with the state. 
Um, I'm doing the actual, I'll call it field work, as far as we get the plans from Mr. Delano, we get Mr. Uh, Giroux working on the appraisals. Mm -hmm. When we get all that in, I'll put that together, and then the board will have to meet individually uh, in close session with the property owners, like we did for the Center Street project, Absolutely. to discuss whatever. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, and good work. We do appreciate it. Next on the agenda, a recommendation from the town administrator to award bid for network services. Madam Administrator, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we made it to this step. <laughs> so um, everyone knows I've been talking about a network administrator, network support, upgrading. So we went out to bid for new IT services. So what we found out is we're actually getting a pretty good deal from Terminal. They were the lowest bidder based on the scope, and then I discussed with them a flat fee for service, um, I mean, a flat fee contract instead of fee for service, which I had actually talked to them about before even going out to mm -hmm. bid. So with every, this is all detailed. They were amenable to that, Madam They were, yes. Okay. So the figure, the quote that you, I'm requesting that you award to Terminal is $18,900 for support for Old Town Hall and Town Hall. Um, this is our cloud-based support, our programs that we use, like Microsoft Word and that whole suite, and um, maintaining our, what they call data backup, so just keeping us up and running. They are also essentially on notice. Karen and I sat down with them and said, this is, these are our problems with what's been going on, and we want to fix them. So we talked about that. We're going to start rolling out some policies about who orders a computer from where. Um, we have had some computers purchase, not since I've been here, but previously. You know, they'll just run out to Staples because it's cheap, but that's not getting a business machine. That's your personal home computer, so that's not what we need to be doing. We need to order from them. Um, so rolling out those kinds of policies to make sure we have a better handle on it, asset tags or something similar where we are computer controlling where the, exactly, mm -hmm. computer use policy, but controlling and knowing where our um, equipment is. Uh, this also comes with a slew of upgrades in, in the sense of, not upgrades, a slew of ideas on how to upgrade our infrastructure so that it works better. Some of this includes a simple phone call to Comcast to increase our internet speed. Others a little bit more involved, like getting the server out of the town accountant's office, converting the downstairs um, to have an actual server room instead of that stuff being in the bathroom. So he's going to work with us on that, um, help us secure somebody who could do the work if we go that way. So they ended up being the lowest bidder. My recommendation, as is the recommendation of the IT committee, which is reconvened, um, the addition of Dave Marble was great. So there's three individuals, and they are now considering how to best lay out the town's network for all departments. So once the new police station's up and running, or maybe just before, they'll be meeting with Brian St. Marie of Terminal and figuring out how to get the police and fire appropriately talking because right now it's not really that great um, so that's rolling out and some other problems that were highlighted um, but they basically have a year to take care of this work with us on this and and we'll go from there is it your plan to okay so right now if we have a problem I'm literally nine times out of ten just sending an email to terminal support mm -hmm. you get somebody you've never heard of right. working on the issue so is it going to be communicated if this is approved to the employees that we're only contacting Brian St. Marie because the other concern I have is if we're contacting a bunch of different people or a generic email address and a bunch of different people are working on stuff we have no idea of what common issues are exactly. what issues you know each department is right. confronting in terms of network issues mm -hmm. so is that your goal? Yes. So Brian actually said the exact same thing, but on his side, mm -hmm. because we do have this tendency, oh, well, it's $200 a call, I'll just deal with this. But if they are no, if they are made aware that there's the problem, they can fix it on their end and stall 
future problems from happening. So that's why the f flat fee contract yeah. is mm -hmm. better. Um, and then I said, okay, so every time there's a problem, you want everybody to call you. And he said yes. So to me, that's carte blanche. Mm -hmm. Call him up, let him know, and uh, he can help us build a more secure, more sound network. So he'll be the only contact. Um, no, he won't be. It was to call any time. And I said, okay, Brian, I'm going to look at you like the town's network administrator. And he said, fine, that's... That's what we're But everything for, so goes like through Mr. St. Marie. Yes. So I want him to like know because exactly. I want him to know what we're dealing with sure. because he's going to be my guy to help me make uh -huh. sure that our network is what it needs to so be. So he may not be fixing the issue, but he he'll is aware out, and he has aware. a list oh, okay. of okay. Right. keeping track of everything right. that's going on. And I okay. also don't want to make it inconvenient. If somebody wants to send an email to the help desk and the support, yeah. You know, maybe they CC Brian at the same time, sure. so he's aware. But sure. that all will be rolled out in this policy that we, you know, really will be a memo for me. Okay, this is how it's going to work. If you need a computer, you're going to purchase it through them, and and uh, so on and so forth. Would we? Do we have the potential to actually save a little bit of money by transitioning out of the fee will. for service? You will. So even though it's like eighteen thousand nine hundred dollars in addition to what's already been approved, really we could. So we actually have not yet paid for what we are on now. Okay. <laughs> so I refuse to pay that. Good work. Good work. Um, sorry. Drive but he's okay name. with that. And so this would be our annual expense and okay. going forward. And it was still well below. The next lowest bidder, in case mm -hmm. the public's interested, was 27100 And it wouldn't have included what we've got going. So um, it's a good deal for the town. It is the best value for the town. And we are starting a good relationship where both sides feel comfortable coming together and coming to a resolution. Absolutely. So down the road is, um, will whatever support this will entail, if and when the TMLP thing comes down the road, we're going to be in good shape? Yes, we say? would still use them. TMLP would basically just be laying, like, the actual tangible stuff that we would use and sure. and terminal would still be monitoring our when our use and our network okay. and he's aware of our intention to join to a fiber optic network okay. and so he's given us a little bit all right we'll make sure this is at the police station make sure you're doing this so he's I know okay. you said you talked to Ken Bell so that's what I was yes. wondering yes. about okay Selectman yeah. Pacheco this money is already in the budget correct so we're not asking actually we have a little bit of a savings because we ended up going out I had requested a network administrator and it was voted I think 31,000 so this is well below but it will help us help build up what we need to build up That's and great. a year from now we'll reevaluate this to re see how it's uh, worked out to select in Goulard's point one of the recommendations is to upgrade Comcast to better class would that in the future, not be necessary if we're transitioning to fiber optic? Definitely not be necessary <laughs> okay. if we're transitioning. Right. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Yep. But the old town hall has a better speed, and we've asked Jim, how, what's it going? Like, how's it going? They have no problems. Can we move over there, please? Right. Like, we should not have any problems. We should not have to be running down to reset the modem. We should not be having problems. So it's, we're looking at it. Do we have any other questions, colleagues? I don't have any. The IT I don't know if I said that the IT committee sure. does recommend sticking oh, with absolutely. terminal and having more of an engaged relationship with them. And thank you for involving them in this absolutely. and you know convening them and that you know and we they they've that. actually it's requested to meet that's right. They've uh, requested to meet with Brian and he's going to be coming down and I think that will will be great for him to have a dialogue with with those folks and get us where we want to be. You said one lot, uh, you mentioned before you said this building and Old Town Hall, would, it all, would they also service primetime as well? I don't really know how we're connected with primetime right now. I don't think it's a VPN. They're on our list, they're supported, but they have a couple of problems that we don't really get over here, mm -hmm. and I think it's because of, of the network and how. So he is well aware of my vision of everybody's connected, police and fire on their own, mm -hmm. And he's got to he's gonna help us get to where that is. And Perfect. a simple VP, it's called a VPN connection. Yeah. It's what Virtual we have with Old Town Network. Network. We yeah. have that with Old Town Hall. Sure. And it will just be adding that one on there. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. I'm accepting motions. I'll make a motion that we award the bid to terminal services for our network, network services for the town. In the amount of? $18,900. <laughs> 
I have a second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just wanted to thank you. I know this was kind of a labor of love. We have been talking <laughs> about this for quite a while. Um, and I just want to thank you for convening the IT committee, getting all the ducks in a row before this came to us, you know, for, for an official decision. So I appreciate that very much. And it's been a long time coming. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone in Questions this building and interview. elsewhere will agree. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Give me just a moment. I like to run out of here publicly after. <laughs> Mrs. Brady, do you mind filling the others in for me? Thank you. <laughs> Get a basket. Okay, public, we are moving on to a request by the town treasurer and town clerk to declare surplus inventory. Um, again, the, these documents are part of the packet that we upload to the agenda and minutes section of the Board of Selectmen's uh, webpage. I will just say it involves three old HP computers, one Dell computer, one monitor, three adding machines. Is that fancy for calculator? And two <laughs> yes. keyboards. Oh, it is really? Okay, I was just joking. Um, Abacus, is that what this is? <laughs> They have tape. Oh, God. oh it's one of those. Paper. And then it prints it out. Okay, uh -huh. it's like a receipt. Okay, I am entertaining motions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the request of uh, the treasurer collector and the town clerk and declare as surplus property the items that you just read. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? This we need will to get the word out to departments that this equipment is available because when it, I found it in the copy room and said, where is this going? Um, at least one person said I could use an ad machine. <laughs> My calculator's <laughs> junky. Mm -hmm. And I, could, I said, well, there are three in the box. But that's when I got Mary and Sue and said, you just can't leave this here to get rid of it. So. I'd also, that's a really good point. I'd also like to add, if you, I know you never have spare time, but if you have a spare moment, can you look at the three old HP computers and the Dell computer and see if any of them could potentially be a computer we could, um, not refurbish. I know what you mean, clean. Right, for our town computer, our town so office. maybe we don't have to buy yeah. um, one. Yes, I actually have a plan for that already. Okay. Um, I, I thought that they were going to make sure nobody else needed anything before this came here. Did that not happen? No? Well, okay. as I said, make sure. the, I walked in the copier right. one day, and there was a box of stuff that looked, was piled up on the recycling bin. And I looked in it, and Mr. Ferry came in because he took a he took wireless mouse. mouse. Yeah, I took the little uh, wrist pad thing. And um, that's when I asked, Sue, so what is this? And they said, oh, that shouldn't be there. So they generated this list. So I'll just verify. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have one other point, and it's a little bit off topic, but if you'd indulge me. Do we need, so I know that our administrative assistant needs slash deserves some sort of new computer or iPad, whatever it's going to be. Do we need, should we get that on the agenda as soon as possible, maybe for the next meeting? To order one? Yeah. Or do we not need to? We don't need, if it's in the budget, which it no. would be, we can do we don't, that. We don't need to act on it. Perfect. No. Can we... Yes. Can we remember I that? Would, well, I, that's so strong. I was actually just, was it today I was talking to you about mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Um, because I actually, if she stops using the iPad, I want the iPad to be able to do an electronic packet because mm -hmm. I've got a lot of paper and mm -hmm. it's making me feel bad about the Perfect. environment. So I understand. Um, <laughs> I understand. So, yes, that's very much on our mind. So Perfect. Thank you. If Mrs. Brady is interested, do you want to keep your old computer? That. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys, you ladies, deal with that. <laughs> okay. So we have a request by the Dighton Cultural Council to Wait a moment. Oh, we got a motion on the table. You are right. We have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? Nope. So I'm holding on to this until I verify that, and then it will go to Finance Committee for their vote. Of course. Okay. The only thing I would ask is when you look at the, any computer equipment, if the decision is made it's going to be scrapped, we gotta make sure it's clean. There's Following no everything needs to be backed up first. Like we right. can't just dispose. Right. Everything gets backed up. 
and then it gets scrubbed once we're verified that it's backed up. Okay. And then um, it, it will be a new machine. And I just want to say on the keyboards, I would like to get a keyboard yeah. for my new computer because the touch system on laptops is terrible. So if it ends up surplus, I'm willing to buy one for, I know it's just surplus, but I'd, it's something I would like to have to keep personally. Okay. So. And they both got different connections, so I would have to figure out which one will actually right. fit the computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, test that out before you go buying one. Yeah. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the surplus inventory? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Next, and thank you, Madam Administrator, of again. Course. Next, we have a request by the Dighton Cultural Council to appoint Brett Wilson uh, as a member. She Accepting comes, motion. She comes unanimously. From them. From them. Yeah, I got the email on that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we appoint Brett Wilson as a member of the Dighton Cultural Council. And I'll second that. We have a motion and a second discussion. Thank you, Brett. Brett. <laughs> uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. And the motion passes. And I would be remiss if I didn't state that this is yet another resident who has joined a committee who is new. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing new people um, into the fray here, and we really appreciate it. So if anybody else is interested in serving your town, uh, we do send out an email list um, with all the vacancies, and it is also on our website as okay. well. Oh, this is this is Brett Stonstrom Wilson. Wilson, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's a uh, uh, she's a good candidate. That's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you again. Next, we have uh, Mr. Jonathan Gale, who has applied to be uh, on the 40B committee, and Mr. Gale is also our American. Americans with Disabilities Act slash EEO for our town as well. So um, we appreciate your service, Mr. Gale. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we appoint Jonathan Gale to the 40B committee. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Are we gonna send this to the ZBA as well? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay perfect. <laughs> Selectman yeah, the, the ZBA's process is a little different. They're going to, they'll interview him. Perfect. But I did have an opportunity to talk to Jonathan Gale. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a great asset to this uh, committee, uh, and I'm looking forward to working with him. you so got good feeling. We're going to have a meet, uh, meeting next uh, on September 19th mm -hmm. at 5 o'clock. He already made aware that if he's appointed, he'll be at that meeting. So I'm looking forward to working with him. Good work. All right. at, at the department head meeting, he told us some of the things he wants to do as far as uh, bringing the town into ADA compliance. So he's really active yes. uh, on that site. I think actually today they went to the CAD training. I think it was today or coming up. So that's a, a very good thing to go to, get some networking going on. And I'm very hopeful he can bring in some grants. Not hopeful. I know he will. Absolutely. I know he will. Absolutely. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Next on the agenda, we're going to skip I since we already acted on that, is uh, to ratify an executive order for Bike to Beach. And this was an event that happened, just so everybody is aware, on Saturday, September 1st, 2018. But because we did not have um, a meeting until the 12th of September, I did have to sign this. Uh, executive order so that's why we're here tonight to ratify it madam administrator so we did get that on like the Monday um, of the week of the event the police department did approve it and signed off and then um, you of course issued the executive order so we're here just to ratify that I thought we did do that or did you just tell us about it I, I just told you about it I just told you just so you knew that we oh, were doing okay. it yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that the that we ratify the uh, executive order giving permission for the bike to the beach for autism cycling event. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. 
That motion passes. Oh, we're, we're really firing in all cylinders tonight. Next uh, is item 8K, one day liquor license for Bristol County Agricultural High School, educational fundraising event, and request to uh, waive the fees associated with that. Um, and this did come from Ms. Robin Van Rotz, the Director of Community Outreach. Um, I think it's a good cause. I am in support. Also, they're a nonprofit, which is in yep. here. Right. I'll make a motion that we approve the one day liquor license for Bristol County Agricultural High School educational fundraising event and request that the fee uh, be waived. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. You know, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm going to withdraw the second because I actually sit on the advisory board. I so um, I, I support it, but I shouldn't make the second. Okay. I will step down and second. Good call. Um, further discussion. I guess my one question, do you know if this is, and maybe it doesn't matter, is this specifically for all alcohol or for beer and wine? Does so nonprofits are allowed to do beer and wine or liquor? Sure. Uh, as long as they buy from a approved or licensed by the ABCC distributor. So I believe... It doesn't really well, matter. They didn't I was circle just curious. It. They didn't circle it. I'm like, is this an event I need to go to? What's, what are they serving? <laughs> Um, well, they had this last year. This, last year was the first event uh, to raise money for their foundation. Um, I remember getting invited. Something else came up. I couldn't go. Did they serve you beer or a martini? I didn't go. Well, oh, so nonprofits are allowed to do the all alcohol. Uh -huh. So it doesn't matter. It would just be right. Serve whatever you want. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any any anything else before we make motions? No. Okay. All right. I will entertain motion. Wait, we, we get the motion, the motion in a second. We just need to vote. vote. Let's just vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. You're too focused on the event. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there. Okay. Next tonight is last of the new business, a one-day liquor license for the Dighton Lions Club annual arts festival and a request to waive the fee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion and to waive for the uh, permit and to waive the fee. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Just wanted to thank the Lions for all that they do for the town. And hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and that motion passes. We this, this one is beer and wine. Oh, okay. Good to know. All right. Pino Grigio. Okay, next we have correspondence. Huh? Where's Puerto Rivas? Ah, oh, I have some of their wine at my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying, that's why I'm trying to get out of here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> correspondence. Gave me some <laughs> I do, it was so good. Correspondence. We do have a piece of correspondence from Jonathan Gray, um, who also sits on our Green Communities Grant Committee um, regarding the formation of a Dighton Trails Committee. And I'm, I'm, I don't, do you want me to read this? Nope, I can. Um, Thank you. I can <laughs> summarize for you. So um, Jonathan Gray and Chris Chandonet actually came and we sat down and talked about this committee that originally was kind of like a bike path committee, which I think would be a great addition mm -hmm. to the town of Dayton. And then he said, well, Jonathan Gray was like, well, let's not limit it. Let's do trails and say, great idea. So he's here requesting, or not here, his email's here, requesting um, the establishment of a Dighton Trails Committee that would sort of be a segment off of the Taunton Pathways Committee, what they're doing. Um, their, their bike path is coming right up to Riverside Ave, a very close. Railroad. Railroad Ave, thank mm -hmm. you. And um, the thought is that we could connect to them, but if we don't, go right up to them we can get some regional funding to do the connection and get a little bit for free so I know how horrible that sounds but saved us some money <laughs> <laughs> um, so they have a couple they we were spending some ideas about where to put the bike path Nicole Skylison actually in the ZBA has been working on this open space sort of thing so I did invite her to that meeting and she had kind of a vision of where we would put it um, and where some we would come up with some state 
neighbors. They would be um, the state would be the neighbor and working in sweets sweets knoll. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ideas here, and we need a committee to steer that. Correct. And I have Jason Quinn, Jessica Daly, and Chris Chandonay as three individuals interested in serving on that committee. Okay. So we do have some interest. Uh, so I guess before we act on this tonight, which again I support this. I know um, I've spoken to John. Uh, Jonathan over the years about this so I'm glad to see him finally kind of you know Connecting. not forcing the issue but we really can, yeah. um, an impassioned plea for us to do this my question would be how, before we vote how many c members People. do we envision being on this five three like oh so I, I like because so there's gonna be some work they'll right. have to do mm -hmm. this isn't exactly. gonna be like just taking votes so I like five to seven okay I am partial to five because if you think mentally you don't have a lot of people, everyone jumps in and does an equal share of the work. But if you think that you have a lot of people, you're like, oh, so-and-so can the do same it. same three or four. Right. I understand. So I like five. It's also easier for a quorum. You need three people instead of four. It's just easier. Um, and I also asked if Jonathan Gray would be this, because he serves on the Taunt and, Path Taunt and Pathways Committee, this liaison to our committee to help open up funding opportunities. He said that Taunt and Pathways would support Dighton, um, help find those grant opportunities and funnel them over here and just make us aware. So starting this committee would be, they would be working in conjunction with Taunt and Pathways Committee and maybe eventually, you know, years down the road, linking up with the, um, East Bay bike path in Rhode Island, which I think would be really, oh, yeah. really special. That. Um, so that's really cool. And Chris Chandonay goes on all these other bike paths, and I just thought it would be such a good perspective from him because he can see what others have. Uh, we talked about people who would want to buy benches in memoriam of maybe a loved one that has passed away. Um, bricks. I love bricks. I always buy a brick, and my kids get a big kick out of it. So sign me up for a brick. Um, but things like that to help fundraise to actually make that happen. And then there's also AmeriCorps and all sorts of groups that come down and build these types of things. So there's a lot of work for the Trails Committee to do. And we need them to be appointed. I like this idea. First of all, I like the idea because building trails, I mean, that's, you know, that's very family friendly. It keeps people active. So, the, you know, there really are no downsides. Um, and I, all, I really like this idea, too, because I foresee us working really closely with Taunton on this. So now we're building bridges of communication to our nearby town and what I'm also thinking, a nearby city, what I'm also thinking is um, being affiliated with a big city on a, a potential project like this might mean we have a better likelihood of getting some sort of monies exactly. um, to bring and this to fruition. Not just any city, but a gateway city that gateway gives you what? extra they're designated as a gateway city so you get extra points on a lot of grant applications oh, okay so why are we not a gateway city we're not a city oh that's true well, that makes sense. <laughs> but we might be more successful we might be more successful than this yeah. than we were on south coast rail uh, i hope <laughs> we, we i feel like we lost that battle <laughs> the south coast rail for anybody who was wondering. so are we just forming the committee tonight and not naming i think we should wait because we don't have if well, we, we need do five people or to have seven yeah, and, we don't right. have enough okay and they fill out the volunteer forms. I literally asked Jessica Daly today, though, if she would Were do it. Were you arm twisting? No, she said sure, because she was <laughs> talking about things. And I said, you know, you'd be great. We're about to form this trails committee. Do you want to do it? And she said yes. So. She has wanted to be yeah. more involved. Um, and I like that town, she so. could be like an open space representative, because she's on the open space committee. Absolutely. She's also on the land use committee. Mm -hmm. I love it. So Continuity. I, I'm, I'm laughing, because Chris Chan today. <laughs> We got him to, we to volunteer for the cemetery commission. <laughs> yes. And then something else came along, and we got him for that. Right. It's like. So I asked him if he would be on it, and he said, well, I would just like to Do be I like to a helper. Notes? He just wanted to like be, you know, just interested. And I said, oh, like a, like a groupie. He said, yeah. I said, okay. So then Jason Quinn said he would do it if Chris did it, and so now we've got them both Now we've got them both if, if Perfect. Want, so. We get the green light? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I agree. That's right. I like that. The roads are too busy. That's exactly what Jessica said, too. Some place for them hey, to Hey, Chris can't blame us for this one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. So I uh, absolutely I'll make a, thank you. I'll make a motion at the town uh, form a Dighton Trails Committee composed of five members. I uh, second. 
We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. The motion passes. Um, and thank you to everyone, especially you, uh, Mr. Gray, for um, really not holding our feet to the fire, but um, being very insistent about this. That's how you get things done, especially in government. So we do appreciate that. Um, and we look forward to seeing what you guys uh, accomplish together. All right. Uh, we do have some announcements. An affordable housing lottery is in progress for six three bedroom homes located in Dighton Woods. Applicants must meet income and asset limits, um, which are outlined on this form, which is available at Town Hall. There is an informational meeting on September 13th at 6.30 p.m., that is tomorrow, at the Dighton Public Library. Applications are available at Dighton Town Hall, the Dighton Public Library, and online at DightonWoodsLottery.com or you can request one by calling 781-329-8201. And uh, I'm going to allow uh, my colleague to do the remaining announcements, if you don't mind. Sir. Sure. Mr. Can I just comment? Sure. Um, anyone who's interested in um, applying for one of these homes, uh, please keep in mind that the $10,000, up to $10,000, mm. uh, is available to first-time home buyers to assist you with buying a home and closing costs. So that's that Attleboro Taunton Housing Consortium that I'm always talking about, and we do have information here. So uh, there's $10,000 that could help you. That is a very good point. Thank you for that. I'm taking notes, so I can do that. You can apply for no. that. <laughs> no. I wish. So I have a couple of announcements for the Dighton Historical Society. I want people to understand that I'm a member of the Dighton Historical Society. All the members are volunteers and we don't get paid. Uh, we're having a psychic fair on Saturday, September 22nd uh, from 9 to 5 p.m. at the Taunton Yacht Club uh, located at 2125 Water Street in Dighton. And we're also having a Native American Nature Tales by Diane Edcombe Sunday, September 23rd at 2 p.m. at the Friendship Hall at the Dighton Community Church, 2056 Elm Street in Dighton, Mass. The community events is being, some community events are being hosted by the Friends of the Dighton Public Library. They're having a taste of Dighton. I hope everybody comes to this. Uh, this coming Monday, September 17th, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Dighton Pavilion bef behind Town Hall. For more information, contact the library at 508 669 6421. This is either the third or the fourth time they've uh, done this. Uh, Mm -hmm. They're also having Create Your Family Legacy, Organizing Your Materials, Thursday, September 20th, 6.30 p.m. at the Dighton Public Library. And they're also going to have a Create Your Family Legacy Storytelling, Thursday, September 27th at 6.30 p.m. at the Dighton Public Library. Uh, the 40B Committee is looking for a one-at-large uh, one at large member. We just had uh, Jonathan Gale added to it, and we're now seeking one uh, additional member. I'm the uh, Board of Selectmen's liaison person for the uh, 40B committee. Primetime is looking for adults in need of daytime activities. Uh, reminis reminiscent with Myrna. Uh, returns to the uh, Lincoln Village Community Center on Friday, September 21st. Uh, she'll be there from 10.15 to 11.45. Everyone is welcome. I did want to add two community events. One, I believe, is the Dighton Community Church is having a craft fair. You've probably seen the orange signs. Uh, throughout town on October 13th. Uh, you can look at the website for the times and what will be offered, and also a yard sale for the Dighton Community Church on October 20th. Um, again, hours online. And isn't the Dighton's uh, Lions Club also having a uh, Nether Cow Chip Festival? In, in Rehoboth, Rehoboth on September 16th. How did I not hear about this? No, you also going to be a judge of that one, do you? I was not invited to be the judge, but I loved being the judge, so <laughs> sign me up. I did buy a ticket, so here's hoping. <laughs> and it's going to be a colonial day uh, behind Town mm -hmm. Hall on uh, September 15th from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, the Rehoboth uh, men and men will be uh, present and be doing demonstrations of different things that uh, they would have done in the 18th century. All right. Thank you, Selectman Pacheco. And at this time, we'll move on to Selectman's reports. Selectman Goulart, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, 
MMA started up today, so just a brief report. Um, we discussed uh, some of the legislation we filed last year that didn't make it all the way through, and some's going to be refiled uh, that relate to um, uh, assist municipal and district rate, play, rate payers. Um, and this is, this is for our, in the impact of proposed environmental rules and regulations, which all relates to stormwater and all that good stuff. Uh, another one, sustainable water resources funds. We're going to refile that one. And this one also includes stormwater in that uh, we're trying to see if we can get approval for wastewater utility fees, which include stormwater. And then there's more legislation that's brand new that we're talking about that deals with net metering on solar farms. Um, we had a presentation from the Central Mass Stormwater Committee and what they're doing uh, with the grant money they got from the state trying to create a uh, statewide program and it's called Think Blue Massachusetts which is uh, patented after Think Blue Maine. So it <laughs> anyhow. Um, and there was an update on recycling which I mentioned when Mr. Ferry was here. Um, what I asked to speak about tonight was, there was an article in the Taunton Gazette on September 3rd, on the front page, email Spock spat between Dighton, Rehoboth, Selectman. Um, this relates to the vote that the board, this board took uh, on September 20th, no, our meeting was September Probably the 22nd. 12th or something of August, August, August 27th. August. Um, and at the meeting, what we said was that we were not going to hold an individual, uh, this board was not going to meet individually with, uh, separately with the Board of Rehoboth to discuss the regional agreement that they have drafted and that we asked to have a meeting, a public meeting, mm -hmm. at the next, well, it now will be the next Dighton Rehoboth meeting on September the 25th, so that invited to it would be both boards of selectmen, both finance committees, um, obviously the school committee would be there, so that we could uh, review the agreement that the regional school district, the elected officials, school committee, have uh, put together. Um, the SPAT part um, has nothing to do with the board of selectmen's meeting that we had. Um, the reporter, and I realize they write to sell papers, um, somehow accessed information that was on Facebook, postings made by Dr. Z, and concluded evidently from that and from comments made by members of the Rehoboth Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the posting created, and I'll quote, varying degrees of angst, and uh, this whole spat thing Again, I don't know what the spat is. This board that's took their word. The re that's the reporter's exactly, word. Exactly to sell papers. Mm. Um, that, no offense, Jordan. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, but the fact of the matter is, I think this article has blown the situation out of proportion. I think it's it's created a problem or angst, to use the word that was cited. Uh, between the towns, and my concern is that, first of all, we're still partners with the town of Rehoboth in the regional school district. One of the things that was pointed out at the DR graduation uh, this past June, all of the speakers, the student speakers, the adults that spoke, talked about we are one school, we are, we are one group. My concern is that articles like this could mislead or make the effect on the children would be to make them feel like we got to take sides, and this is not what we're about. That's not what a regional school district is about. Uh, we are one school district. Uh, we are partners with Rehoboth, and yes, from time to time, we will have disagreements. Um, again, I think that if uh, the reporter had not accessed, or the Rehoboth Board of Selectmen had not accessed information that was on Facebook, I don't think we'd have seen this article. Um, certainly, Dr. Z has a right to express an opinion, uh, however, publicly, Facebook, you name it. I would only request that, because of what's happened this time, that if any member of the board 
goes to a public medium and makes a statement, they preface it with, this is not, I am, this is not an official comment, a message from the Town of Dighton Board of Selectmen, similar to what I put when I write up meetings uh, for, for reading. That's valid. Um, again, I think, I, I immediately thought of the DR graduation, and I thought, this kind of thing should not create a rift in our schools. We are, our kids are not in competition. They are part of the regional school district. <laughs> if anyone would have had a rift, it would have been the class of 61, because when we came together for the first time our senior year, we had to be united as the pioneer class. And <laughs> we didn't know any of the Rehoboth kids, and the Berkeley Dighton kids were together because we went to school next door. Mm -hmm. Yet, for that senior year, we were the senior class of 61, and we're able to pull it off and have had succeeding uh, um, get-togethers, uh, the last one being our, our uh, uh, two years ago. But anyhow, uh, that's what I wanted to address. Um, you don't mind if I... No, and I personally feel... The other thing, too, is this is the same night, with the night we voted uh, not to meet separately with the Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. without the school committee being present. is the same night that we voted to send them a uh, congratulatory certificate on the celebration of their anniversary. And I'm looking at this saying, it, it was positive. It was not whatever. So anyhow, um, we, we do plan to meet with the school committee and the selectmen have been invited. Mm -hmm. It's a public meeting. Anybody wants to come, Absolutely. and and um, I'm willing to work with anybody. Uh, that agreement needs work. It, we need to come up with a revised agreement, and we need to get this thing settled. Mm -hmm. But these kind of articles don't help. So. Agree. What I would say. So the the actual timeline for anybody who's interested in it um, was. The Rehoboth Selectmen contributed to an article in Rehoboth Now. My Facebook post was in response to the article they had written after their meeting in response to the email they received. There wouldn't have been a Facebook post if they didn't pretend like my email that I read to you both, which nobody had any issue with, um, was a slap in the face because we had already told them twice that was the third time we were rejecting the offer. So it wasn't, they weren't actually upset. They had already known two or three times prior that that wasn't gonna happen. So that was just, a, it was an article that was written, personal opinion, everybody, um, to make it seem as if we were the mean old Dighton Board of Selectmen, um, which I know we're not. What I told the reporter, which clearly wasn't juicy and didn't make it into That's the article, <laughs> correct, <laughs> was I had no problem with Rehoboth drafting their own regional agreement. I had no problem with them having and advocating for what they think is best for Rehoboth. But guess what? You have to show up at the meeting if you want your ideas to be implemented into the final product, which is a amended regional agreement that's palatable to both Dighton and Rehoboth, but of course that didn't make it into the article, and that's fine. Uh, Jordan, I, we need you there, so keep your job. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I have no problem. I can work with anybody. It doesn't mean I'm going to agree with 100% of what they want. Um, I will also add that I think a lot of angst has been created in the town of Dighton when we hear the same officials in Rehoboth saying, we subsidize Dighton schools. We subsidize Dighton schools. That personally is what I feel is pitting or making people feel like they have to choose sides. Um, so what I'm going to request everybody do, myself included and the Rehoboth Board of Selectmen members, is let's stop talking about it before the 25th. Let's all review the documents, go in um, with a willingness to listen to one another's position with an understanding that we're both going to advocate for what we feel is best for both of our towns and i feel like that's how we should approach this but i will also state that if people 
if elected officials are going to publicly declare what I believe to be inaccuracies about the town of Rehoboth subsidizing Dighton, I'm pretty sure we just raised and appropriated and took from free cash money. To, we would have happily let you pay for our modular units, Rehoboth, if you could have agreed on that. Don't, don't. <laughs> but, but that was a joke. Um, <laughs> No, I think no, we should. <laughs> right? well, yeah, yeah, no, if you really want to pay. Um, but we'd just be happy they pay their bills. So at this point, I'm going in with an open meeting, uh, open mind, um, and I hope that I see the Rehoboth Board of Selectmen sitting on the other end of the table. Mr. Selectman Pacheco. Sure, I just think that the public needs to know that you've done a lot of work already on this, that you've met many times with the school committee. Yep. Uh, unlike uh, Nancy and I, we haven't been sitting down with them. Uh, so I understand. Well, they point. they had their own meeting with this, so they like weren't. They, they, they had chose the not to be at right, that table that night. But you were very involved with it, and Absolutely. I understand your fresh uh, your frustration mm -hmm. with the uh, the board of selectmen in uh, Rehoboth. Uh, you know, this is social media. Uh, we sometimes have to be careful what we put out there. Uh, I try not to respond to this kind of stuff, but I did when you uh, I saw the comments that you made. I felt that you weren't speaking for the board; you were speaking for yourself. I was. And, uh, I was. That's how I in, I interpreted that. Mm -hmm. So. And when I referenced the we in this article, it was about the vote that we, we. unanimously took. It wasn't, uh, you know, we served for two years. I would never speak for you. You've never spoken for me. Um, we are going to give you the same courtesy. Um, so I will say, if my comments f made some, you feel like I put you in a difficult position or it's an us versus them, it's not. Mm. My point was... Rehoboth Board of Selectmen, you're all adults. If you choose to come to the meeting, you will. If you don't, you don't. It has nothing to do with anything I'm saying. You're either going to come or you're not. I hope you're there. Um, I hope you come with an open mind like we will. Um, again, you're going to advocate for what you think is best for the town. That's, I would never begrudge yeah. you that. But I do hope to see you um, at the other end of the table. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and I think that night we voted during the discussion we, we all agreed we want the existing agreement, the Rehoboth draft, and the DI draft yep. so we could compare notes. Because as, yep. as uh, uh, Mr. Pacheco said, uh, you've done a lot of work on this. I've been away from this for a no, long not, time. Not work. I just well, I read you, the document you, and showed up exactly. to the meeting. And you were at opinion. meetings. <laughs> but, um, I mean, certainly the regional agreement is not fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to have those three documents and say, oh, well, that's similar, oh, well, that's different. I mean, that's how we went about this. And I, I really think that um, had that article not appeared, had been written the way it was written, if it had been written factually as far as what our intent really was, then it wouldn't have sold papers and we wouldn't have had this to do mm -hmm. um, but I'm with you I'm willing to sit down with absolutely the selectmen the finance committee the school whoever wants to talk about this so we can work on this and get it done I think what offended that I'm gonna nip this in the bud but I do want it because you just made me think of something I think the part that offended them was they felt like their draft wasn't gonna be discussed I may have been inarticulate when I said that what I meant was I don't intend on going through their draft line by line, but of course, if you're sitting across the table, you can say for this section, we, we think this is best. And that, of course, we would never begrudge anybody. The point, of, the point of negotiations in my mind is that you know you're gonna go in and you're not gonna get 100% of what you want, and you're gonna have to give a little to get a little. And I will always, and I'll say this to you, Rehoboth Board of Selectmen, no matter what happens, whether we agree on a regional agreement or not, we're all going to leave with our dignity. Mm -hmm. We're all going to leave um, with the intention of doing what's best for the kids. So um, that's all I have to say. But does anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? Maybe. Karen stopped typing, so we got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> she's thinking of that new computer yeah. she's getting. Right. She's selecting models now. <laughs> Okay, uh, next on the agenda we have acknowledgements and uh, it is an acknowledgement of an anonymous donation to prime time in the amount of $25. Mr. Chairman, I move that we acknowledge the re anonymous donation to prime time for $25. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstentions, the ayes have it. Motion passes. Meeting minutes. Oh, Mr. Chair, may, may I just make one announcement? Because sure, it's going to happen before we meet again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Soldier and Bears is starting up again. It's going to be Monday, the 24th of September at 1030 at um, Lincoln Village. So um, if anyone has uh, a little bit of time, we, we work from 1030 to noon. And um, making Soldier and Bears, we've got all the material. We've got plenty of uh, everything we need to do it. So well, we took the summer off, but we'll be working again. Everyone's the welcome. The 24th of September, a Monday at uh, 1030, and it ends at noontime. Thank you. And if we could just make sure we have that announcement for our next, uh, on our next agenda. Next, uh, we have some meeting minutes. We have four sets uh, that are ready to be approved and one new set that we need separately to accept for review. So am I, since I wasn't uh, a member of the, select, uh, the Board of Selectmen for the May 16th and May 30th, Meaning, am I able to vote on this, or do I just sit back I would on say this? it's improper for you to vote. Okay. Oh, improper. Ooh, okay. Sorry. sorry. I don't want to be improper. <laughs> 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 I mean, no, the etiquette book well, Yeah, you. I would have used another word, but uh, sorry. I'm improper. <laughs> you would be out of order. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the minutes of the selectman's regular meeting on May 16th and the minutes of the regular meeting on May 30th be approved. I'm going to step down and second that motion. Discussion. You can at least comment if you'd like. I, I was present for those uh, meetings, but well, I'm okay with it. Right. I don't want to be improper. So. <laughs> it's an indictment. Okay. <laughs> My Hearing job no to keep you on track, that's all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. That motion passes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for selecting and regular meetings of August 1st and August 8th of 2018. Second. We have a motion and a second. One cl clarification, I believe the August 1st meeting was a special meeting. One of those, but I know it doesn't right. matter, so yes. that's fine. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. And the last set. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the review of the minutes of the select regular selectmen's meeting on August 22nd. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Approval of the warrants, Selectman Goulart. Um, I'm going to share the wealth with Mr. Pacheco. <laughs> if you do the August ones, I'll do the September ones. Sure, I'll make a motion that we approve the warrants. Uh, warrant number 9A-19 in the amount of $87,440.81. B, warrant number 9B-19 in the amount of $23,839.99. C, warrant number 9C-19 in the amount of $45,031.31. And warrant D, warrant number 9D-19 in the amount of $204,000. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, I move that warrant 10A-19 in the amount of $91,137.47 payroll. Warrant 10B-19 in the amount of $764,000. $116.52. Most of that is for the police uh, station uh, contract. Warrant 10 C in 9-19 dash in the amount of $22. The last two being accounts payable be approved. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Mr. Chairman, I move that warrant 11A-19 in the amount of $102,640.95 payroll. Uh, 11B-19 in the amount of $160,837.98. And warrant 11C-19 in the amount of $22, the last two being accounts payable, be approved. 
I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it, and the motion passes. Any public input? Okay. <laughs> so we have no public input. Uh, as chairman, I will entertain a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may be detriment have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, I do declare, and the Board of Selectmen will not be returning to open session. I so shall move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it and the motion passes. Roll call, please. Aye. 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 All right. Cable, public, thank you so much. Yes. And everybody have a great night. I'm going to grab my file in case you have questions. Oh, okay. I like that you waved. <laughs> I copied them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. I got to make a bathroom run. I was just thinking that. I'm going to declare a recess. <laughs> recess. Nobody's even listening. Hey, Mr. McKeon only <laughs> plays them for 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> Literally. He did that to me a couple of times. Yes. I was supposed to make motions. I, I spent 30 seconds staring at him saying, what? <laughs> <laughs>